Hi, welcome to my second vlog. It's the 30th of September and it's absolutely scorching down here. It's, it's just some freak weather that's caught us out of the blue. It was uh, 28 degrees earlier when I, when I nipped out to uh, to the shop. Oh, I forgot my, well, I forgot my spare gas and uh, halfway through making the first cup of tea of the morning and uh, packed in on me, so I was absolutely dying for a cup of tea this morning, but it's not to be. But yeah, it's 30 degrees, clear skies, a little bit of a breeze on now, but most of the day it's been flat calm, so it's terrible fishing conditions. And uh, well, I suppose I'm making excuses because I'm blanking so far. Um, I, I turned up yesterday uh, in the evening, had a quick walk around, uh, saw one fish right up the top end where I was fishing last week, but there was somebody already in the swim. Um, I thought about dropping in one of the two bays uh, next door, but that just tends to put a bit too much pressure on the fish, especially when the lake's not that busy. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll drop up the other end. Uh, it's I mean, a swim called the first point. It's, um, it's a swim I had a five fish hit from, five fish? Five fish hit from uh, last month. Um, so I thought I'd give this a go. I saw one or two fish last night. Uh, there's a couple of fish in the, in the bay to the right, um, showing at about 10, 11 o'clock last night. Um, but they weren't really definite shows, sort of thing. I, I could just make it out because it was flat calm in the moonlight. They were just sticking their heads out a little bit. They just looked a little bit too big to be silverfish or tench, so I think they were carp. And I did see one this morning right over the top of the middle of the rod. Um, like I said, I got here yesterday evening and I was a bit of a rush to get the rods out because, you know, the, the, the times are uh, cutting in a bit, the, the daylight times are. And um, I probably got the rod out in a bit too much of a rush. Um, the hook was uh, from a rig that I was using last week and it wasn't as sharp as uh, what it could be really. Uh, so I tried to sharpen it up a little bit and, and chucked it out before it got dark. Um, and I think that cost me a fish in the end. Maybe I should have took a bit more time and, and put the rod out after dark, but I wanted to make sure it landed in the right place and it wasn't tangled. So uh, yeah, a bit of a mistake by me then. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is, is, is a bit about uh, the bait I've been using. I mean, um, I've been using pretty much boy only, um, but I, I tend to fish it a little bit differently to everybody else, and I know that sounds a bit daft. Um, but I use two different sizes. I, I've got uh, 16 mils here, and I've got some 12 mils as well. And what I do a lot of the time is I, I crush off and down. So as you can see in here, there's, there's a lot of dust and a lot of bits and pieces, a lot of broken bits, and uh, so it's, it's just not all whole boilers. So what that does is um, it releases the flavour. So once the once the bait's in the water kind of all the flavours are being released. You know, if you can imagine a boiler with a skin on it, it takes a bit for the water to break it all down. But this, when it's all broken up, it just releases all the all the natural extracts, all the feeding triggers and everything into the water. So uh, it just attracts the carp that much quicker. And I think what it also does as well, there seems to be a lot of silverfish in here. And I, was, I dropped a few broken baits into the margins this morning. And um, within half an hour, the roach were running, so just, just clearing up all the bits and pieces. So I, I think that feeding activity from the roach and, and from the tension from the small bream and whatever else kind of attracts the carp as well you know it's again the, the, the roach are going in there attacking the, the small uh, broken boilers and just releasing more attractants into the water and I think that the feeding activity and the, the extra attractants that it's kicking out helps to bring the carp in I mean uh, all I do is uh, just got a quarter crusher just grab a handful of baits stick them in just crush it down a little bit not too much because I don't want I don't want powder as such. I just want you know some little broken half baits. And as you see there, there's a few little bits and pieces and plenty of broken baits. Plus as well, all the different sizes it means the carp are picking up different weight food items all the time. So when it comes across the one with a hook in it, then it's it's not that obvious to the fish that it's that it's got a hook in. It. So uh, yeah, that's essentially what I do. Not rocket science, nothing brilliant, but it's it's been working for me. I've having quite a few recently, and hopefully it might work for tonight. So let me just show you this one bit where I'm fishing. This is what's known as the um, first bay. It's uh, across that side there is where I saw a couple of fish last night, just, just sticking their heads out. I saw nothing in the day at all when I turned up, up this end, but um, I thought it was worth a go. You know, it's a, it's a good passing swim. So I'm right on a point, you know, this whole, uh, this whole lake's made up of points and everything. Points and, uh, points and bays. And that's the second bay, just there. As you can see, it's high pressure, terrible fishing conditions. But uh, I've got the three rods out, ready to rock and roll. And just, uh, just hoping something might happen tonight. 